Okay, so the main reason that I wanted to show you that is lots of different films from lots of different people. So there was a really nice democratization of film festivals, and it's great for audiences. So as a consequence, we sell out. That's a 730-seat venue. We had one night the first year. We had two nights last year. We'll have again. But part of the reason is it's a great watch. There is nothing worse than going to a film festival because you don't know what the films are. Sitting down, being 10 minutes into a film called Gangrene, you know, it's just something. And 10 minutes in, you realize, oh, this film sucks. And then you have 85 more minutes of suck. Our film festival, if you don't like a film, stick around because three minutes later there's going to be a film behind it. So it's very, very uh, geared toward viewers who go to the film festival. But the other thing is we wanted to make it a film festival for filmmakers because when I was your age, all I wanted to do is make films. And the honest truth is it took me 15 years to make my first film because I didn't have enough money, I didn't have enough resources, I didn't have enough friends to do it. 15 years is way too long. The one thing that I learned was, again, when I was in college, if somebody said, independent filmmaker, well, I would have told you that an independent filmmaker is auteur, you know, storyteller. But then when I got into the business, I would tell you that independent filmmaker meant I don't have any money. And it's true. So how do you expedite the process to get people to make films faster? And that's part of our motivation because 15 years is too long. So here's why people make films that are shorts today. This is Mike Plant. This is the number one film festival in the world today. And Mike Plant was just in Charlotte. The Knight Foundation brought him in. And he was talking about shorts are a great way to show the world you can be a director. If you want to be a director, well, you want to be a cinematographer. If you want to be a director, you want to make great films, you now have the opportunity to do it. Because I, I hate to say this. Well, actually, I don't hate saying this. It where you go to school is important. But at the end of the day, I don't care what production company it is, ad agency. They want to see what can you do. What does your reel look like? How great are the images that you shoot? How great are the stories that you tell? How important and impactful is what you do? Showing people what you can do in a short is critically important. So here's the thing about our film festival that people like. It's financially accessible. It's easy to do a 100 words film. Doesn't cost a lot of money. The other reason that people like to make it is this is still our business. It's still by coastal but it's starting to fill in and our filmmakers are coming from not only Charlotte but from all over the country and all over the world. So all of these countries in red have filmmakers who've submitted films which is exciting and fun and as a consequence this is what our filmmakers look like. It's a very a uh, diverse group of people, which is great because I, you want to have as many different people telling stories from as many different backgrounds as possible. Here's what you get if you can make a film that gets picked. You get professional reviews, you can compete for prize money, play in front of large audiences, you get recognized, and you get this. Does anyone know what this is? Yeah, so that's kind of really important. And it's a third party vetting system, but it's one of those ones where a lot of times when you apply for a job in our business, they're going to want to see your resume and they're going to want to see your IMDb credits. The other thing that this guy um, said in his, when he came to meet was he gave example after example of how people in the business can get pigeonholed. And if you have the opportunity to show what you can do, you can really jump ahead. Did anyone see the movie Whiplash? It was nominated for an Academy Award. It was about a music teacher. Anyway, great film. The guy who directed it couldn't get any studio to pick it up. And not only could he not get any studio to pick it up, nobody wanted to hire him because he didn't have enough credits to make that film. So what he did was he just shot the first scene of that film and he took that scene around and as a result he got picked up, they hired him to be the director and now he's booked for a long period of time. So shorts are a great way to do that. Like I said earlier, if your parents were like, oh my gosh, my kid wants to be a filmmaker, this is the worst thing that ever happened, all of these opportunities are available to you. Guy last year made a film called The Most Memorable Miles. He used that. He submitted it to a company called Publicis, which is a Parisian company based in France. He now works for them. It's great. This guy makes videos for the New York Times. He submitted a film. These are all the corporate video opportunities I was telling you about. This is branded content, which has become very popular in our business where you have kind of a subtle placement of things. This is who's coming to this year's film festival, so I'd strongly encourage you to go and meet these people. This is Christina Beck. She's an actress director from New York, uh, from Los Angeles. This is Robin Canfield. He works with colleges and universities. Actually, you guys should meet this guy. If you have people who are traveling or studying abroad, he works with them to tell stories in the countries where they go. So if you were you know, going to vacation to, I don't know, Haiti, not that you would vacation to Haiti, but he, he could connect you to make a film. It's a really interesting program. This guy runs Indie Grits down in Columbia, which is another independent film festival. This woman runs the, fil the Full Frame Film Festival, which as Allison knows, largest documentary film festival in the country. She'll be here. This guy uh, runs Southeastern Filmmakers. He also works with Divergent Media. He does a lot of stuff in editing, Avid, 
other systems. This woman, Kristen McCracken, is an invaluable person if you're a filmmaker. She's in the business of placing your film to distributors or looking at a film and going, hey, that's good, but it would be great if you did this. This is Erin Pursley. She's an award-winning filmmaker. And this is the number one actor in Charlotte right now. It's Rob Trevier. Is that his? Rob Trevier. So he's uh, in the movie Sully that just came out. He plays an air traffic controller next month. Ben Affleck's film comes out. He plays Ben Affleck's father. He's currently shooting with Jason Bateman in Atlanta. He'll be here as well. Students also receive all these benefits. And then this is what's germane to you all. When people think of directors, I think that a lot of times student filmmakers think of that guy. They think of this. Or uh, some of the student filmmaker go, hey, man, I want, you to tell you, I want to tell you about my film. I go, oh, really? What's your film about? And they'll go, well, I shot it on 16 millimeter film. And they'll go, well, what's your film about? Well, I used all these lensings. And they don't talk about story. They talk about techniques and they talk about technology because you guys are great at that. Not necessarily you all, but the younger generation is gifted technically. They know how cameras work. They know how to cut. They know graphics. They know music. But when it comes to storytelling, Mm -hmm. Not quite as good. So we decided that we would make student filmmakers also really focus on words, which is exactly what 100 Words does. This is a great quote from Mark Twain. I didn't have time to write a short letter, so I wrote a long one instead. And what that means is it's a lot easier to write a long letter than to write a short letter because you've got to really focus on what's relevant. This is why students struggle with filmmaking. One, writing's hard. Two, folks' generation doesn't read as much as previous generations. Three, young filmmakers tend to overwrite. And I always tell people there's no director in Hollywood who looks at a script and goes, man, I wish that script had more words. It's always the opposite. They're always cutting, cutting, cutting. So if you can communicate a great story in 100 words, you're showing people that you really know how to communicate. As a result of that, these schools are teaching it. We're going to work with you all to do the same. There's other schools that have now come on board, which is great. Here's how it works. So this is a film called Man on Bench. Man on Bench was made by a kid at UNC Greensboro, and that kid's film was good first year. His second film, he graduates from UNC Greensboro, shows at the Cannes Film Festival, and now he works for NFL Films. So we have had some success stories. This is Alan Brooks, and this is one of the great regrets I have that I didn't videotape his acceptance speech. He's from Orangeburg, South Carolina. He went to the Savannah College of Art and Design. He won for Best Student Film. He talked about how he was so excited to have the opportunity to make a film. And now Alan has had tremendous success. So I said, hey, could you just say a little something about the 100 words? It took me a while to track him down. And this is what he said. It was great. He blew me off, which was great for a while because he was so busy. But then it was great that he had to shoot it in a hotel because he was on set. So he, that's one of the success stories that's been really exciting. The other thing that we do is the student charity mentoring program. And this program's worked out really well. We find colleges and universities and we say, find a student who shows real promise and has a gift for filmmaking. We'll connect that student with a charity in their organization so that the student can tell an important film. This would be something maybe that you'd be interested in. And then the charity becomes the beneficiary of that student's film. Well, after we did it for the first year, we had a lot of success. The charities were excited. The students were excited. And we got some grants to provide professional mentoring to students. So they would have one day with a professional cinematographer. They'd have one day with an editor. They'd have one day with a composer. And their overall film quality raised significantly. So um, th these are kids doing it. This kid actually goes to Queens, even though he's wearing a Clemson shirt. <laughs> this kid's film I'm going to show you. His name's Max Rivera, first generation American. He wanted to do a film on the Carolinas Refugee Resettlement Agency because that was something that meant a lot to him. So we said, great. And that's him editing with our editor, Greg Greshik. That's actually a clip from his film, which I'm going to show you really quickly. It's just a two minute film.
to see how that way they would like to give me sconces and I might gel for it. Uh, I said it has a wet house backup. I want to have to play this specifics. This measure is fixing. It's fit in whatever you want to do. It's yours. And then at the end, he gets his, I mean, well, that's the guy he featured, but Max gets a credit, and it worked out well for them. One of the other things I like to show is that this young man worked, he did a film called Opening Skies for Camp Blue Skies, which is a camp for adults with learning disabilities, and he now volunteers there. So that was kind of a win-win. Just, I'll, I'll wrap up, I'm almost done. The, the film festival is growing, and we're excited about it. A lot of different schools are partnering in. We're now actually looking at possibly having it held in other cities. We did that last year in Memphis. Um, this guy held an event, and so the thinking would be long term to have 100 words in other cities and the best student film and the best professional film would ultimately be shown in Charlotte. So that's an overview of the film festival. I know it did a lot of talking. Does anybody have any questions at all about anything related to that before we talk further about opportunities to work with you all?